Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in crypto, and I'm bringing on bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests, this is going to be the catalyst to push Bitcoin to its all-time high, as agreed upon by JP Morgan, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, and uh, Michael Saylor with MicroStrategy. And that thing is hyperinflation, but it really comes down to it's just good old fear. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. Also, the El Salvador IMF deal, which is going to be uh, pushed about by Bitcoin. There was also a second Bitcoin ETF launch on Friday. Totally missed that. So we're going to uh, explore those options. And then lastly, we'll talk about uh, the reason why Chainlink is pumping is because the Associated Press is running a node now on Chainlink. So we'll take a look at all those things plus more, but let's take a look what's going on in the market, shall we? So today's pretty good day. It's Saturday. Uh, we had a little bit of a pullback on Friday with the uh, Bitcoin ETF by ProShares, but still solid. Market cap is above 2.5 trillion. Bitcoin price is 61,000. We keep bouncing off that 60,000 mark. And also some of that money that was uh, flowing into Bitcoin and reached all the way to 67,000, um, it found its way into alts. And over the last 24 hours, I mean, we've seen some pretty good price action. Ethereum went down a little bit, 4,000, but Binance Coin over the last 24 hours up a little bit. Cardano, not so much. Polkadot, a little bit here and there. And then Uniswap up a little bit. Chainlink up with the news. Litecoin up. Shiba Inu for whatever reason. And so on and so forth. So over the last 24 hours for alts, eh, not too bad. And then there were some, uh, some real big winners. But the thing that I was looking at was this, was the... Bito, B-I-T-O, that's the ticker name uh, for this ETF. And we can see just tracking how things have been going. It started off with a bang, and it was one of the it was one of the the highest traded ETFs of all time. One or the first, the second one, and it was a, it exceeded expectations. It started pretty well, around 40, jumped all the way up to 42, 43, and then this was on the 20th of October. And then we just had a little bit of a slide after the first day, and we opened up a little bit, then it traded a little bit lower. Went a little bit sideways and then we ended up again sideways then we opened up again on friday went down again a little bit more of a dip here and now we're below the the initial price of the 40 dollars. so that's what's going on with with the etf me personally i i didn't think it was that big of a deal but people put a big emphasis on it so i was like well okay but in all honesty i don't really care about paper Bitcoin. I don't, I just don't. I I care about a spot ETF. I care about us holding Bitcoin, the real physical one, but I don't really care so much about this. The only thing this is good for is exposure, and it's good to get it out there so people can go, "Well, the SEC approved it and they wouldn't lie to us." <laughs> so it must be good. So on top of that, I also want to take a look at uh, some charts, just a chart I should say. I'm not a chartist as everybody know. Knows, but um I like to see this one thing, and James always talks about this at Invest Answers, and he sees just how uh, the Bitcoin price is gobbled up at certain points. And it seems to me like that point is actually the $60,000 mark. And we can see it right here. We've been just kind of bouncing on this channel as far as the Bollinger Bands. Right around 60000 everything just gets gobbled up. Even down here, even though it, it dips a little bit lower, we went sideways. And even this candle here, this is uh, today, 23 October. And we can see it just kind of went down to here and then it was immediately got bought up and the bulls are like, no, it's not going to happen. And now we're we're trading this very, this very tight pattern. The RSI is right in the center. It's not overbought, oversold. And then the MACD, uh, you can see there's a little bit of changes here. But I just, I think we're going to trade in this channel for quite some time until uh, this catalyst goes about. And what is that catalyst? Well, that brings me to our first story. Hyperinflation and good old fear. Look, I know people uh, don't like to talk about it, but fear is a it's a great motivator. It works out uh, pretty well and it gets people to do things that uh, normally they wouldn't do. And this is what I'm talking about. So this was a pretty good article over a lot of things. So hyperinflation per Jack Dorsey of Twitter CEO says, this is gonna change everything. Here's what's going on. Inflation is gradually kicking around the world. And some people say it's because of the lax monetary policy of the Federal Reserve and quantitative easing which is just a bunch of, which is a fancy word for money printing. And to, to make this point a little bit clearer, here's what we have as far as the purchasing power of the dollar. You know, I know you've seen me uh, uh, trot this out every so often, but look, you gotta understand, <laughs> since the 70s, uh, the purchasing power has just gone down and down and down. And the inverse is true as far as money printing. And down here as a little note to remind myself, as of February 10th, 2021, there was 2.05 trillion worth of Federal Reserve notes in circulation because they keep printing. And I know they're printing a lot more. So 
and that was just in February. So if we can see the purchasing power goes down, well, why, well, why wouldn't it? We just keep throwing in money. So at some point, either they're going to have to raise the rates, taxes have to come in, or they're going to have to get uh, these tricks or stop them, or they can just print to oblivion and we'll see what happens. I think it's either deflation or hyperinflation. One of those two is going to be just awful. And then to prove my point just a little bit more, let's take it out to 1913. You can see that when your grandparents talked about how the dollar went far, they could buy like a car with a nickel. Well, they were right because back in the day they could. And now, of course, today, this is in 2013 for Pete's sakes, uh, we've only got that. And to make this even more clear uh, or simplify it, if you just take like a $20 bill in the 20s, you can buy a bunch of stuff for that, right? And then uh, going forward, can't buy too much. And I'm, I'm here in Puerto Rico and I can tell you right now, 20 bucks doesn't go anywhere with the taxes and the shipping and everything else. It doesn't buy squat. And of course, uh, Bitcoin is the inverse true. Uh, over the last uh, so many years, one Bitcoin in 2011 couldn't buy anything. And then in 2017, it could have bought you, well, a mid-sized car, we'd say. And in 2021, who knows what it's going to do. So uh, the inversion is happening here as far as the dollar and Bitcoin. But to get back to the article itself, uh, to beat inflation, many experts and investors have advised investing in assets such as gold, silver, and of course, Bitcoin. I am also investing into real estate. And also I've been uh, investing into art through Masterworks where they do a uh, fractionalized share of artwork. There's again, link in the description. You can check that out because it's uh, it's an uncorrelated asset. I like that part. And this was the big thing. In January, 2021, the United States inflation rate was about 1.4%. 1.4%, I don't think that's true, but okay. But currently staggering around 5.4%. I still don't believe that's true. And uh, you can talk to a bunch of different experts. And there's one thing that two experts can agree on. And that is that the third one doesn't know what they're talking about. But in all honesty, if you take a look, if you just listen to some people around there, they think it's around 8%, 9%. Some people say as high as 13% inflation rate. And this is Charlie Biello, or Bileo, excuse me. And he talks about inflation expectations in the U.S. to rise even higher. So I don't believe that we're at 5.4. I think it's much higher than that. And then also some concerning news. Data from Trading Economics reveals that G20 countries are also seeing a spike in inflation. Argentina, Canada, Germany, Spain, and many others. And we can just see that, again, I don't know if these are totally accurate, but it does show us that everybody's going up. Uh, on the right side, you got 3.3 for Spain. Now, now it's 4, 3.9 for Germany, 4.1. The one that's only that's doing pretty good is India. It was 5.3, now it's 4.35, 3.5, so good for India. And then Turkey, Argentina, Jesus, crime and Christmas, that's a lot. And then uh, Jack Dorsey here says, look, hyperinflation is going to change everything. It's happening. And uh, I think we can see those all around. Just go to the grocery store. Uh, go try to do any kind of renovations. Uh, go try to buy uh, goods and services. And you can see it right away. I just saw a report that they're going to raise Social Security. I think it was like like five or $6,000. And people are like, they're so happy. I'm like, don't be happy. That doesn't buy anything. I mean, it's it, it helps. But it's just the dollar is just getting weaker. Anyhow. To finish this up, Peter Thiel, the founder of PayPal, says he wish he would have purchased more Bitcoin. I feel like I've been underinvesting, underinvested in it. Bitcoin is the canary in the coal mine. It's the most honest market we have in the country. And it's telling, telling us that this decrepit regime is just about to blow up. And if you believe some stories about Peter Thiel, he's been doing a lot of interesting things. Uh, one of those being that... Uh, he uh, <laughs> led Silicon Valley's elite to buy doomsday bunkers in New Zealand. Just a story from Business Insider. I mean, the guy is a billionaire, so why wouldn't he do things like that? And I think that when you have something like that, you can see what could potentially happen. These are the worst case scenarios. Do I think the world's going to uh, crash and burn and end? Not personally, I don't. I know some of you uh, do. Leave me your notes in the comments section. But I mean, there is, there is a pretty big crash coming up. Uh, if we keep doing the same things we do. So that's why I've invested in a range of assets and crypto being uh, one of the biggest ones. And then uh, lastly, this is from JP Morgan. We believe the perception of Bitcoin as a better inflation hedge than gold is the main reason for the current upswing, triggering a shift away from gold ETFs in the Bitcoin fund since September. And this was the whole reasoning behind what they talked about as far as uh, why Bitcoin's price went up. They didn't think it was the ETF at all. It's just the fear 
of hyperinflation and uh, what is going on with the Federal Reserve as they continue to print and print and print. And I have to tell you, uh, it scares me as well. So that's what we have for that article. I think as time goes on and people start seeing the same things happening, I think people will start to see more about uh, cryptocurrency, digital assets, mostly Bitcoin, probably even Ethereum, and get out of that as their uh, flight to safety. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's go on to our next piece of this El Salvador IMF deal. This one was interesting, and it's it's why I wasn't really excited about the ETF, but I kind of was excited, and this was one of the reasons. So El Salvador aligns 1.3 billion IMF uh, loan by using Bitcoin adoption to even the odds. So Phyllis Rodriguez, El Salvador central bank head, allayed fears of the country's decision, decision to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender may hinder the approval of a 1.3 billion loan from the IMF. And that's what they're all trying to do. They're like, look, yeah, we went against your advice, but your advice kind of sucked. And uh, it actually worked out pretty well for us. And uh, he says, look, we don't see any risks perhaps upside risks. We've explained openly to the IMF. For us, uh, Chivo, which is their, which is their app, which uh, all the uh, El Salvadorians are using to, to transfer and pay for things in Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is simply a payment method. El Salvador is banking on the increased Bitcoin usage in the country, with President Bukele saying that more than a third of citizens have begun using the asset as currency. The deal with the IMS, IMF is of importance to the debt-ridden country it opens a door to international markets in 2022. So here's the thing. When I see this, it's important that the ETF works. It's important that the price of cryptocurrency, mostly Bitcoin goes up because then when the IMF kind of looks at it and goes, okay, and I know there's a whole host of, uh, a slew of, of information behind all this of why they would not approve it or why they would, I get that. The IMF is the IMF, but if we can, just kind of show them a little bit like, look, we know you're not on board with Bitcoin. We know your reasons. We know you're pushing your CBDC agenda. But look, we're just using it as like a, a, a use of payment because the old way sucks and it's awful. And the uh, remittance payments and the and actually the transaction fees are eating us alive. and We can't get out of debt. So just let us use just this Bitcoin, just this thing here. And we can also move on. Also, I think it's a, a good thing that they that they do this and they relay the information that, hey, we use Bitcoin. We know you guys don't want to, but look what it did for us. And this was, just so you know, that uh, um, El Salvador bought Bitcoin on September 6th, September 7th, and also on September 20th. And when you break it down to that, they've got, this is uh, this is Bitcoin treasuries, or big, uh, by Bitcoin world, or the Bitcoin treasuries. And you can see right here that um, as far as the countries go, You've got uh, El Salvador at 700 right here. So when we take a look at that and we just break it down as to, as to what they did as far as uh, how, they're, how they're doing and how they're uh, making out. So they bought on the 6th. The Bitcoin price was 51,000. They bought 400. So if you take you know, 51,000 times 400, that was around almost 20 million, 20.4 million, somewhere around there. They, they bought some on September 7th. And this was a pretty... Ballsy move, honestly, by Bukele. He they bought on the six, it was 51,000, and then it dipped like crazy. And he said, Hey, we're gonna buy the dip. And they did it. They they bought the dip 40,150 Bitcoin at six, almost six and a half million. And then it dipped again, September 20th. Remember these sweet days? They bought it again at 45,150. So the Bitcoin price today is let's just say I, I like round numbers, not that smart. 61,000. So if we take that. And look at the difference. That's uh, they just made four million dollars in, she's like a month, month, something like that. Yeah. And let's just extrapolate that all the way down for the other two time points. So yeah. So if we take this in a month, they went four, five, six, seven, eight, almost. They made like nine million dollars just on their great investment, as opposed to putting into the U.S. dollar, which doesn't appreciate, which is hyperinflating potentially. And it is not doing much good. And especially with those remittance fees that they are getting charged with. So in all honesty, if the IMF takes a look at it and says, well, and again, yes, you're, Rob, you're so naive to think the IMF, I get it, I get it. But if they really take a look at it and just go, look, it's just for payments, this is what we're doing. And it's actually a good hedge against everything that's going on. Makes sense to me. So this could be, again, I hope this is a, 
I hope things do go well. I hope uh, the people who in El Salvador, they're holding on to Bitcoin a little bit. And of course, they have to transfer it over and uh, you know pay for the things they have to. But really rooting for this one. And uh, hopefully it'll show uh, the IMF and the SEC that, hey, well, we're here to stay. So just keep approving the things that uh, will allow us to grow. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our second to last. We'll finish up with two good stories. Second BT, second Bitcoin ETF launch on Friday. This was uh, Valkyrie. Totally missed it. No idea what this was. But uh, apparently Valkyrie launches the second ever Bitcoin futures ETF. Would have been, of course, they wanted to be first, but they weren't. But hey, they got in their second. The Valkyrie Bitcoin strategy, uh, as known as BT <laughs> BTF. I think it's BTFD, which I think we all know what that stands for. Buy the F and dip which began trading today, today on the NASDAQ and is the second Bitcoin futures ETF to launch this week. Uh, the launch marks the second time ever that the SEC has approved an ETF focused solely on crypto, even adjacently via the futures markets. Issuers have been filing since 2013, which is why I didn't think it was going to get uh, approved. But we've got this one and then we got Van Eck coming on, I think, next week or November. Someone correct me in the comments, but I know Van Eck uh, got approved. They're just waiting for the date to go on. So if we take a look at this, the ticker is BTF. How did everything do? Well, not so good. Uh, they started off pretty well, around 25, somewhere around there. Then just kind of slid down, traded sideways, and then started off around 24.30. So still down from its all-time high. But again, it's a futures ETF. It's paper Bitcoin. I don't really care about it. I want it to do well. But again, I just, I'm just i more interested in the spot ETF like most people are and, and what we can buy and hold because it's hard to manipulate that i mean still it gets done but not as easy as this futures stuff anyhow that's what we got and then lastly we'll finish up with a little good news chain link and associated press i actually stole this from george over cryptozor us because i was watching his stream today and i was like oh i should uh, talk about that so if you listen to george you already know this one but it's uh i thought it was a big news i'm glad for chain link probably because i own it and I'm super biased on this channel. I usually just talk about all the things that I own. That's just the truth. But uh, here's what we got. Associated Press plans to launch Chainlink node to publish data. So Chainlink Tech is the ideal way. This was actually a quote from uh, uh, the director of blockchain and data licensing, Dwayne. Uh, I'm not even going to try it. So Chainlink technology is the ideal way to provide smart contract developers anywhere in the world with direct on-demand access to AP's trusted economic, sports, and race call data. And that's from the director of the Associated Press. The Associated Press said its primary reason for the shift to blockchain was trust and that the on-chain data it provided would be a publicly accessible, safe, and secure record of verified information that dApps and smart contract users can tap into. And that's the big story. And I think this is a... it's. It's a great story for Chainlink because that, of course, will, will drive uh, the price up. But another thing is, I, I, it's amazing. It's good to me to see this because we have a real big problem with news not being real. And some people will say it's fake news. Some people will say it's just inaccurate news. And so if if in some way we can try to vet out some of this these news stories, you know, I'm like, that's not, that's not real. Or that is that. And they can do something like that with the Associated Press as it's on the blockchain. If there's some way that developers could kind of, you know, use AI to say, this is not real information. This is, this is not right compared to something else. This is a win-win. And of course, when, of course, that uh, Associated Press comes in. So look, so that is it for today. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's a, it's a big day in the market. My big uh, interest is what's going to happen on Monday, but we'll see. Also, catch us over on... Uh, uh, the DCA show, it's me, George Cryptos R Us, and James, the best answers. That'll be tomorrow, Sunday at, uh, I think, 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern, so on and so forth. But that is it. So look, if you like today's show, uh, give it a thumbs up. That helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing. Everything we talk about are time sensitive and things are going to start moving rapidly. So if you want to subscribe, this would be a good time to do so. Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.